Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm going to finally get around to doing the comparison between my old soldering station and the new one, which I know I said I was going to get around to doing a comparison sooner. Things got in the way. Uh, namely, I had a child and because I had a child, I've had to invest a lot of time and energy into that. It took a lot of energy to come out here and make another video because trust me, my, my day is just constantly pounding. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. The number one thing that I think matters to most biomed technicians is the speed in which a soldering iron starts from scratch and gets to the point where it's able to melt solder. We don't sit at soldering benches all day long. If you're going to use it, you're going to fire it up, use it for a moment and shut it back off. Because of this, I've developed this test where we're going to compare head to head and the soldering irons are going to be sitting directly on solder. And when it melts through, it's done. It's ready. Okay. So whichever one breaks through first, obviously heats up the fastest. It isn't an apples to apples comparison. Although they are the same iron technology, they both use the same heating element inside the iron. It's not inside the tip. It's inside the iron body itself. Although they use the same technology, one of them I have used for absolutely for years. Let's go ahead and take a look at those and let's go ahead and get this test started right away. Okay, guys, this is the unit that I have used for absolutely years. It has been fantastic. The Oyo Int 899A Plus. This has been my go-to iron for probably 10 to 12 years. But over here, I have my new soldering station and the only reason that I really migrated to this is because it has a hot air station embedded into it along with a solder sucker. And for the most part, it comes with a lot of accessories and it seems to be built rather well. So today we're going to actually test it out. Both these irons are going to be sitting at 663 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 350 degrees Celsius. And you can see I have both irons sitting directly on the hot spot of the point and I have similar soldering points on both irons. This one is new. This is the old one in their respective sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the three. I'm going to power them both on. Both of them are calibrated to 350 degrees C. And we're going to see which one heats up the fastest and is able to melt through the solder first. So let's go ahead and do that right now, guys. All right, guys, here we go. On the count of three, one, two, three. All right, both irons are warming up. Let me see if I can go ahead and get this guy in frame a little bit better. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? All They're off to the races. Oh, look at that. Holy cow, that was fast. I was not prepared for that. Melted through so fast. Look at that. Given it is a new soldering iron, but the new Yihua... This guy is just a tank. Look how fast it just takes down the solder. They're set at the exact same temperature. Yep, 663 degrees. And you can see my old iron. It's still warming up. Still going. Still going. Here, let me migrate it over so y'all can see it. I'm only at 296 degrees. This is what I was dealing with, and this is one of the reasons why I have upgraded to several new irons. You can see it smoking. It's getting there. It's about there, 333, 336. That's pretty accurate. Yep, there it goes. All right, now this one's up to temperature. And well, you can see it's, you know, kind of doing its job. Given it's not a new tip and it's not a new heating element and it has served me well over the years. But when it comes to needing something faster, something better, that is why I have migrated all my work over to this one here. Now I'm, I'm really surprised that there was such a, a drastic difference because when you only have one iron and that's all that you use, you don't really notice other than, ah, geez, maybe it's taking a little bit longer than it should. But the thing that differentiates these is if it takes longer to heat up, it's also going to take longer to compensate for any really high mass. So let's say I have a high copper mass and I've got to solder into that mass. Well, it's going to take this iron much longer to make up for that deficit in temperature than it is this guy here. And 
that is one of the big things that really matters to me is because when I'm doing a lot of chips that have heat sinks and maybe large solder pads, that really does matter. Now, normally I use this solder tip right here, which is the, what, the two and a half millimeter conical. My favorite tip, I've got several others there that I can use. They did come with the iron. <sighs> this guy, it has served me rather well, but you can see the clear problem that I have is my time matters. And every time I flick it on, I've got to wait an extra 30 seconds longer than this guy over here. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Anyway, guys, uh, I knew I was going to do this video eventually. Sorry it took me so long to get around to it because I've had this soldering iron for probably about a month now. Like I said, things happen. Life got in the way. But you can clearly see there is a difference, even though they are very similar technology in the soldering irons, there's a big difference. So even though that one served me well, this one over here is probably going to serve me a little bit better. Thanks for watching, guys.